Hi, Mike here. A couple of weeks ago, I was talking about dates during an Excel class, and somebody asked how to calculate the date of the last Friday of each month. The reason being that for them, that was payday. Somebody else asked if Excel could calculate the date of the last Wednesday of each month, because that was the deadline for expense claims to be submitted. So that's what this video is about, how to calculate the date of the last Friday of each month. But I'll also show you how, with a small tweak, you can change Friday for Wednesday or Thursday, or in fact, any day of the week. If you want to follow along, you can download a copy of the demo file from the link in the description below. So this is what we're aiming for. A1 contains a year. And if I change that to 2025, everything changes and the dates now relate to 2025. To save me scrolling across the worksheet, I've limited my demo to January to June. But if it works for six months, it'll work for 12. Let's change that back to 2024. Some of the information, the month number, the last day of the month, the difference from the last day, these are needed, but don't need to be displayed. So I could hide rows two, four, and five. Same with rows 14 to 20. Those rows could also be hidden. So now you know what we're aiming for. Let me show you how I built it. I've jumped over to the demo sheet and to save time, I've typed the year into A1 and I've typed the headings into column B. I'll go up to C1 and I'll put January and then auto fill that across to June and also align the headings to the right. I'm doing that because I know that underneath those month headings, I'm going to have dates and I'm going to have numbers. Then I'll go to row two, and in row two, I need the numbers one to six. Now I've got a couple of ways I can do that. I can obviously type them in manually, or I could just auto fill the numbers. I could have used a formula to generate them. If you have 365, I could have used the sequence function. If you don't have 365, you can use the match function to calculate the position of each item within the range containing the month names. But to be honest, even with 12 cells to fill, doing what I did, the autofill, is quicker and easier. Why do I even need the month number? All will become clear. To calculate the last Friday of the month, I need to start by calculating the last day of the month. And to do that, I'll use the EO month function, which stands for end of month. Basically, you give Excel a date and it returns the last day of the month that that date is in. And you can put any date in. So if I gave it the 1st of January 2024 or the 2nd or the 20th or any date in January 2024, it returns the 31st of January 2024. So I'll go over to C3 and put equals EO month. Now I can't just reference C1, I need to put a full date in as the first parameter. And that means either typing a date in or referencing a cell that's got a full date in. Or in this case, I'm going to build a date up by using the date function. What the date function does is it lets me build a date up by specifying the year, the month and the day in terms of month number and day number. And that's why I needed the month numbers in row two. So to build up the date, I'll put date, open brackets. The year is coming from A1, comma. The month number is coming from C2. And that's why I need the month numbers, as I say, comma, and the day. Well, we can have a fixed day number there. Let's be consistent and always use the number one. So what it's going to do is it's going to give me the last day of the month for the date that's built up from the year in A1 and the month number in C2 and the one being a fixed value for the day number. Eventually, I'm going to copy the formula across row three. 
And although the month number cell needs to change because it needs to reference the cell above, the reference to A1 needs to remain fixed. So I need to make A1 absolute with the dollar signs. EO month requires a second parameter, a number, which represents the number of months from the specified date. So if I put a 1, that means give me the last day of the month that is after the month defined in the date parameter. So in this case, that would be the last day of February 24, because February 24 is one month after January 24. If I put a 2, that means give me the last day of the month that is two months after the month defined in the date parameter. So in this case, that would be the last day of March 24. If I put a minus 1, that means give me the last day of the month that is one month before the month defined in the date parameter. So in this case, that would be the last day of December 23. Because I want the last day of the month of the date specified in the first parameter, I enter a zero. Close the brackets and enter. Now it's given me a number. I will solve that problem in a minute. But for the moment, I want to copy that formula across. Those numbers are the serial numbers. They are numbers that represent dates. So to display those as dates, I will select the cells with the numbers in, go up to the number section on the ribbon, click the drop down arrow where it says general and go to more number formats. Now I could go to the date section, but the format that I want to use is not in that list. So I'm going to go to custom, delete out what's in that box at the top and type my own format in, which is going to be 2Ds dash 3Ms dash four Ys. Gives me a preview of what the date will look like. Click OK. And now my dates are in the right format. On row four, I want the day name for the last day of the month. Y will become clear shortly. To do that, I'm going to use the text function. The text function will take a date or a number that's stored in a cell, convert it to text, and display it in a particular format. So in this case, the value is coming from C3 and the format is going to be 4Ds. So what that is saying is it's saying, take what's in C3, the date in this case, and display it using the format code defined as the second parameter, which in this case is the full day name, 4Ds, means full day name, and it's not case sensitive, by the way. And then copy that across and align to the right. Now I need to build a little table of day names and numbers. The numbers represent the number of days from Friday, the specific days. So I'm going to put this table in B14. So in B14, I'll type Friday and then autofill that down to Thursday. And then in column C, I'm going to put some numbers starting with zero and just going down sequentially. Again, I could have used the sequence function for that, but one, you may not have it if you don't have 365. And also in this instance, using autofill as I've done is probably quicker to do. The first day that I enter into B14 is the day that I want to use in the entire spreadsheet. What I mean is I want to calculate the last Friday of each month. So that's why I've put Friday as the first item in that list. If I wanted to calculate the last Wednesday of each month, instead of starting the list with Friday, I would start it with Wednesday. What the numbers in column C mean is Friday is no days away from Friday. Saturday is one day away from Friday. Thursday is six days away from Friday and so on. And I'll be using those in the calculation. So if you're wondering what I'm doing, just hold on. You'll see that in a minute. The next step is to fill in row five. I'll do that by taking the day name that's in row four 
and comparing it to the day names in column B and then grabbing the corresponding number from column C. And for this, I'll use XLOOKUP. But if you're using an older version of Excel that doesn't support XLOOKUP, you can use VLOOKUP. So it's equals XLOOKUP. I'm looking up what's in C4, comma. I'm looking it up in column B, B14 to B20, comma, and returning the answer from column C, C14 to C20. I know I'm going to need to copy the formula across row five, so I need to make B14 to B20 absolute with the dollar signs and make C14 to C20 absolute with the dollar signs. And that way, when I copy the formula across, it's going to keep the reference to B14, B20 and C14, C20. So you can now see that in May, the last day of May is on a Friday and it's put in a zero. In January, the last day of January is a Wednesday, so it's put in a five and so on. Finally, to calculate the last Friday of the month, on row six in C6, I'm going to put a formula, which is C3, that's the last day of the month, minus C5, which is the number of days away from the Friday. The last day of the month minus the number on row five, which tells it how many days to go back and copy that across. So in other words, 31st of January 2024 is a Wednesday. Go back five days, and that's a Friday, and I need the date of that Friday. 29th of February is a Thursday. Go back six days, and that's a Friday, and I need the date of that Friday, and so on. So now if I go and change the year to 2025, you can see that it updates the entire spreadsheet. If I change B14 to a Wednesday, and then auto fill, you can see that it changes everything on row five and row six. Obviously the label in B6 would need to be updated, but apart from that, everything has automatically updated. So I'll just change that back to 2024, change that back to a Friday and auto fill down. And that's it. Now, if all you want to show is the last Friday of each month, as I said before, we could select rows two, three, four, and five, and we could hide those. And we can select rows 14 to 20, and we can hide those. Now, you might be thinking that that was quite a lot of steps, and I'll agree it was. But if we take a look at the sheet called complex, I've got the names of the months on row one, and the last Friday of each month is on row two. No hidden rows here. But if I click on, say, C2, just look at the length of that formula. So it depends which way you want to go. Do you want to do it in baby steps and build up the spreadsheet as I did? Or do you want to just go for one mega formula? But certainly from a learning point of view and a training point of view, and that's what these videos are about, I think it's better to do it the way I actually did it. Well, I hope you found the video useful. If you did, please give it a like. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel. I'll catch you in the next video. But until then, have an excellent day.